He laid them on her and was like, she said the B word. It was like, you can die. And I was a little shocked. Sitting in a hospital bed with a 12 inch scar down the middle of her chest, Ashley Williams in here because she says her mom stabbed her. Only thing I recall is her coming at me like with the knife. Like I didn't even see my mom. I see a demon, like a real demon, like. She had veins in her head, her eyeballs was popping out. It happened on Ashley's 34th birthday earlier this month at her mom's home off Myers Road on Detroit's west side. They were celebrating at first. Then at the end of the night, Ashley says her mom just snapped, coming at her with a kitchen knife. I love my mom and the whole thing is I really, like I've been saying, like I don't want her to go to prison for a long time. But I want her to know that she can't keep getting away with stuff. Hard to believe she can say that just two weeks after being stabbed in the heart. Ashley says her mom battles with alcoholism, but Ashley, the oldest sibling, still looks after her. Even the day this happened, Ashley picked her mom up after she'd wrecked another car. I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work. Like they. Is not, they don't know when I'm going to be in the clear. They said I probably will never breathe the same again. Two open heart surgeries and more complications means hospital bills are piling up. And Ashley, of course, cannot return to work as a housekeeper at a local hotel, sharing her story and a GoFundMe page for some help. I would greatly appreciate it. Like, I, I really don't like asking people for help. Like, I've been independent. I like to do stuff on my own. Detroit police tell Fox 2 they're seeking charges against Ashley's mom. It's now in the hands of the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. I would tell her that I love her and I really want her to get help. I forgive her. I hope that she forgive herself and I hope that she finds it in herself to really do get help this time. Like we said, it's expensive to be in the hospital like this and it sounds like Ashley will need aftercare once she's released. She stabbed me right in my heart and was like, she said, <laughs> Okay, so hey, Shalom, Shalom, Kom Yashala, Kohalo Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Rakach Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Aqua that's out here sincerely keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Nawab, just coming at you with another quick lesson. Pray that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, just wanted to just touch on this quick little story, man, of, you know, these, you know, the women that are at ease, you know, according to um, Isaiah 32 and 9 going on down. Matter of fact, I'll get that in a sec here. I'm kind of driving here with a damn idiot driving it behind me, but I'm almost to my little destination. I'll be able to pull up and pull those particular scriptures. But as you can see, this is mother on daughter, but those are a part of the curses. So when you look at the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, I think that's verse 56 or it could be 54. Either way, between 54 and 56, it shows um, a lot of, you know, um, disoriented crimes against our own people, our own families, our own, you know, real like real biological close family within our homes. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's um, that goes on a lot here in um, Babylon the Great, the so-called white man's kingdom, because our people have been put through so much, man. You know, our people have been put through so much, you, you know, you can't do nothing but, <laughs> Jake just want to just drink, man, or smoke their life away, they, or, you know, just to just get outside of the shit that they normally be thinking about, they just, Jake just want to get high, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But once they, you know, it's more and more demons that gather on to them. You know, when you go into the scriptures as well, it talks about legion. You know, with this, um, you know, where the Lord acts of uh, this one, you know, particular spirit or, well, it wasn't one spirit, but the Lord asked him his name and he was like, you know, um, legion because there are many. And legion, man, that comes with like, man, oh my goodness. Man, I'm, I'm not sure how many demons, man, hundreds or thousands of them. But you know that um, our people are like, you know, really caught up in a real bad way man here in america and especially amongst our women you know they go through a whole lot and the so-called white man sold them on feminism sold them on you know they're they're just as good as the man they can do whatever the man can do and now they're out here they have to survive and do everything that 
a man would have done and the woman got to do at the same time. See, the men are out here just doing manly stuff still. You know, even though they may go through child support and go through all this bullshit that, you know, um, the, the so-called, you know, the, the court system of America kind of put them through, you know, on behalf of the so-called um, black woman. But the so-called black woman, now she has to actually work eight hours a day, sometimes 16 hours a day, 12 hours, 10 hours, whatever, you know, working two jobs, trying to make ends meet, you know, and especially right now with the benefits that they used to get with inflation the way that it is right now, man, that, that it don't stretch as far as it used to. And they're going to eventually start getting rid of all that stuff anyway, too. Okay, but I'm at a point of pulling the scripture, so give me a sec here. Okay, so I got um, the Isaiah 32 in verse 9. I'm going to read the um, NLT version as well, that um, New Living Translation. It's a good translation on that as well. Um, but it says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. And basically, you know, straight to the point, repent. Stop being so high-minded. Stop being so proud. See, you women have been, you've had it a, a lot of ease over these, these, you know, from Big Mama way back. Big Mama done taught you to go out and play the field. Don't just settle down with him. He good, baby, but you got to have you a secondary source. <laughs> All this other stuff, you know. But anyway, it's, it's at a point where our women are completely bugged the fuck out, man. They say you could tell a nation by your women. And our women are completely bugged out. Um, I, I will have to definitely most definitely have to say at the lowest of the totem pole as far as like women of all races and nations of people. The so-called black woman is the 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 worst, man. And, and that's no no put down on a put down. That's just facts, man. Look, look, check, check out your TikTok. Check out your Instagram. Check. Matter of fact. Our women are so messed up to the point where the other women are following them and they're becoming even as messed up. You got so-called white women that's going out here getting ass injections and trying it with lips and they trying to get cheeks and they trying to look like the so-called black woman and dance like them. And it's just like it's just Jake stuff, you know, because Jake is like the salt to the earth. So a lot of people follow our lead when it comes to um, certain things. But our people are so corrupt from following the so-called white man. We didn't tuck the so-called white man's wickedness to a whole new level, 2.0, man. And then the so-called white man, he placed it, he placed our women over us. Our, our, our nation is being ran by our women, but they can't handle it. They wasn't built for it. They're not built for the mentality of what comes with dealing with the family, man, the way that the so-called black man is, man. So the so-called black woman, she's the man and the woman in a relationship. And she has no idea that that's what the so-called white man done to her. Now, he gave you Section 8. He's handling some things for you. He gave you food stamps. He gave you some Medicare. And, you know, you can take the kids to get the, to the dentist. And you can go pick up your wick or your snap or whatever the hell. What, wherever you at, whatever his name. Your EBT, you know, whatever food benefit, whatever. You know what his name, wherever you are in whatever state you're in. But when the straight comes down to it, that back end of that struggle, and then are the, the ones that's kind of like, that still kind of, you know, still got somewhat of some wits about them, shit, they losing the rest of their wits, you know, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and all day, with, with shit that don't have nothing to do with nothing except for showing off their shapes. I was walking through Walmart today, and I'm looking like, well, damn, am I in a porno video? Cheeks everywhere. Ass out everywhere. And, and it's, so -called, it's a so-called black woman. R literally, in, in, in Walmart, basically in panties and bra. You see? And I'm thinking to myself, like, well, what the fuck is going on? But that's where we're at right now, because our women are so at ease. Now, here you go. The, 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 hey, it's, it's sad, but... 
Now, what do we get out of this birthday party? First off, right? This was the birthday party that her mom stabbed her on. She got so fucking drunk. Demons was on her so bad that she stabbed her own daughter in the heart. heart. Now, let's go and get a scripture on the birthday party thingy. You know, let's let's see what the scriptures got to say about these these holidays. See, it, matter of fact, it, it, the title right here in the right hand corner right here says idolatry brings destruction. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse one. Hear ye the word which the Lord Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Now, notice it says, O you house of Israel. It's not talking about no other nations. It's talking to you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans because you are the house of Israel. You're the ones that came out of Egypt that made that contract with the Lord, the first covenant. The second covenant is for you. The law, statutes, and commandments were given to you. We made a contract with the Lord to do what he said to do. And if we didn't do what he said to do, here's the end results. We're in a nation of, of stupid-ass people. Because so-called white people can't run nothing, man. They, these people shouldn't be in rulership. But the Lord said he'll send us into captivity unto our enemies. And our women would be above us. Now, here's the results of all that us not obeying the Lord has done to us. You can clearly see it. We're living right off in the, in, the, in the means of what the Lord said he would do to us. And this is the perfect result right here. You're going to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, I, and I'm going to grab that scripture too. I'll grab it. But um, verse 2, it says, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So we're not to learn the ways of the heathen. The heathen celebrate birthdays. The heathen celebrate wicked ass Christmas and wicked ass Thanksgiving. They celebrate all these wicked ass holidays. See, we had high holy days that we celebrated before we came here, Passover, you know, the Pesach. We had, um, you know, new moon, you know, uh, um, um, Feast of Dedication, things, you know, it's different, it's different um, holidays that we had of our own that were righteous holidays and they were, um, you know, solemn holidays to the Lord. Now we're here in these Americas and all these other nations and, and we're celebrating the, the, the holidays of the so-called white man, their 4th of July, their Memorial Day, their Labor Day, their, um, you know, now you got a damn Juneteenth. These are all white people holidays. They'll tell you that it's for you, <laughs> but it's not, man. And the Lord, that's that's a that's a number one. Um, that's one of the most number one idolatrous holidays that you can ever celebrate or is your birthday. Because what it what it does is, is it says that I'm. I should be worshipped, I should be celebrated. Nowhere in the scriptures do you are you going to see that that um, niggas are celebrated on, on a day that they was born on. And, and you got these people. Well, what about Jesus? They'll give you December 25th, and December 25th is not in the, in the, in the, um, the scriptures. There was no such thing as, as December back then anyway. <laughs> there was no such thing as December the 25th in the scriptures, man. That's something new. That's some new age dates. You, you're not going to see December in the scriptures. You can, you can Google it all you want to. You're not going to see December in the scriptures, man. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and they try and make it seem as if, you know, his birthday was in the dead of winter. But the, his birth was actually during the Passover. And if you notice the Passover, the Passover is when spring starts to come in, so to speak, or new life starts to come in. Flowers are starting to bloom. You, you can't get that in the dead of winter. They give you New Year's, January 1st, in the dead of, of winter. There's nothing new growing in a, in a new year. What do you, what do you mean? In, in January 1st, there's nothing growing. It's cold as shit outside. It's cold as shit for the next couple of months after that. You can barely, all you want to do is, you, you don't even want to go outside. You get in your car, man, you, you got to, matter of fact, you need a remote starter to start your car up just from going out and, and, and sitting it and then starting it. You're letting it breathe. You're letting it warm up. And, and, and right now, the way gas costs, you just want to jump in it and go. You don't even want to stop at a stoplight now as much as gas is, man. I can remember one time, matter of fact, this was 9-11. I was young, man. 9-11, man, when 9-11 first came around and the gas went up, and I can remember I was driving and I, I, I kind of I stopped at a light and then I'm looking right and left. Then I just took off. It was red. 
And then I got to another light. I looked right and left. And I just took off. And, and, and there was a police officer. He stopped me. He said, I noticed that you ran two red lights. I said, yeah, I did. He said, I'm, I apologize, officer. But I said, hey, man, the gas just costs too much for me to be sitting here idling. You know that cop let me go? He said, you know what, sir, that makes all the sense in the world. I, I never would even thought of anything like that myself. I said, well, you know, it, it's, it, the gas costs too much for me to be sitting at a light idling. It's people sitting at lights right now idling with nothing around them coming no way. All they got to do is look right and left and see if anything's coming and keep going. Now, that's another lesson. But anyway, <laughs> kind of threw me for a little loop. But this right here, yeah, it's a little bit sad, but. These are the days and times that we're living in where there's going to be family against family, man. It's going to get real rough. See, this this girl's mama stabbed her on her birthday. Just think about when when um, these families are, are house to house and, and, and the food is, is low. There's no food, man. That 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 that, that if there is a man in a home, that woman is going to be dragging his ass to death and going to drive his ass nuts. To the point of him possibly grabbing a backpack and leaving. He might throw the rest of the canned goods in his backpack and get the fuck on the way and leave the woman and the children at, at the house, man. With that fussing and bickering and shit, man. And the scripture talks about, um, uh, uh, matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Khan. Proverbs 21 and 9. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a white house. That's going to come. That's already going on. That's been going on from the beginning of time. But it's going to get so bad right now because no one is going to be constant fussing from the woman to the man if he's there. Now, more than likely, there's not going to be one there. She's going to be talking to him from the end of the phone. He's going to just be like, fuck it. Fuck you and fuck them kids. And especially for a nigga that's been dealing with a woman that, that, that the kids aren't even his. These, these guys that have been taking care of stepchildren and a woman just don't have no fucking respect for them. They're going to be like, you know what? Fuck you and your kids. Call your baby daddy. <laughs> because that's how, how rough it's going to get. The men are sick and tired of the type of shit that the women are putting them through. You know? <laughs> it's about, I'm telling you, it's just about to get crazy out here, man. Matter of fact, um, Proverbs 25 and 24 it says it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. So that's the same one. Matter of fact, that's crazy that it's mentioned, the same exact scripture is mentioned twice in two separate chapters. That's the second time I've come across that today. Where something is being repeated in two separate chapters. So that lets you know how real it is. You see what I'm saying? So you women that actually have a, a, a man... Man, you got to, man, just lay off the nigga, man. If the nigga is working and he's doing his thing, lay off the nigga, man. Let him go ahead and do his thing because he's with, if he's with you, and especially a guy that's with you and the children are not actually his, man. There's plenty of men that's out here that's taking care of other men's children, man. But you women are still battering that nigga, man. But it's going to come a point, y'all. Keep nagging these dudes. They're going to get up and they're going to leave, man. It just is what it is because the times are going to be so rough to the point where even if you're not being, they're not being nagged, they're going to um, more than likely leave, man. It's going to be a large percentage of men that, that are in these homes that are just going to be like, you know what? Fuck that, man. I'm about to leave. Fuck her, man. He, he going to start to remember all those times, all that shit that he went through. You see what I'm saying? It's about to get real tough on women, man. And, and like I said, you know, that's a whole nother lesson, but that's the spirit that I'm speaking in, man. You know, because this right here is sad, but now what? Her mama is about to go to jail, right? She's probably got other brothers and sisters by, by this, you know, that possibly they're going to have to take care of. Now she's fussing about trying to get back to a hotel job and, and cleaning up and behind nasty niggas that's with condoms in the trash can and all kinds of other stuff, right? Just to get back to a job like that, right? She's not going to be able to do it. They're saying that she's going to possibly need assistance for the rest of... Of course she's going to need assistance. You had a damn a knife in your damn heart. You lucky to be alive. You see? And, and matter of fact, 
so lock you let me go to um because this is what i really wanted to get because this is one of the curses and this is is one of the curses that show you who we are as a people we are the children of israel because the lord said that matter of fact right here 28 deuteronomy 28 and 46 it says and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever and what is this talking about these curses let me go back up here for real quick see it says curses for disobedience right here verse 15 but it shall come to pass if thou shalt not hearken or listen unto the lord unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command this which i command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee now when i read verse 46 which let me get it again it says, and these shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. This is how you know who the Hebrew Israelites are today. And it's you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now let's go to this particular curse that's dealing with this particular woman. Verse, verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter. You see that? That's a curse right there. Is this not a curse right here? Is she not hateful towards the bosom? Or, you know, the, this, is, this, this child came from her, man. Her, her, she spit, her, spit the child out, man, and, you know, during, <laughs> during the pregnancy, man. Went through those, 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 those pains. Rushed to the hospital. Spit the baby out. Probably had, took all types of pictures. Probably had all kinds of little birthday parties for this girl and all kinds of stuff. And then she gets to a point of, on her 34th birthday, she's ready to stab her ass in the heart and take her out of the world. But that's a part of the curses, man. And like I said, again, it's, it's, it's sad, but at the same time, too, we can't look into it like that. See, us as the men of the Lord, we have to look at it for what it is because we understand judgment. See? Because the scripture talks about... Let's get that... Um, see if I can find that in uh, Proverbs, I think it is. Salakia. Yeah, Proverbs 28 and 5. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understandeth all things. See, we understand what's going on here. But the average person, they'll look at something like that, like, oh, man, well, that's bold. That's messed up. You know, what's going on with the world today? No, we understand that there's a lot of damn demons out here, a lot of demonic shit going on. And it's mainly amongst, it's amongst our people in general. But our women are extra wicked, man. And when you go straight off into it, um... Matter of fact, what's that? Uh, that goes off into the scripture where it talks about your serpent authority, your serpent authority over the men. But I want to go a little further into it. This is um, First Timothy two and thirteen. It says, "For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. See that she was the one that was deceived, notwithstanding." She shall be saved in childbearing if they if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. But it was her that was fooled. The serpent came to her because he knew that she was the one to be fooled. He didn't come to the man because he's like, oh, man, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for me to pull that shit off on him. You know, that's the reason why he came at the woman. That's a, that's the same way that the so-called white man do our, our women today. To this very day, the damn serpent, the so-called white man, he comes to our women. He tells me, hey, look, I got Section 8 for you. I'm going to house you. I'm going to house you. I'm going to give you food stamps. And I'm going to run that nigga down to get um, child support for you, too. So uh, you're going to benefit from this nigga not being around you and raising your children. And see, these are the benefits of what's really, really going on these days, man. And, and you're going to see a lot more wickedness, man. Because, uh, you see, you so-called black women... Hispanics, Native American women, and I'm speaking to the so-called black woman in general because you're one of the main ones that kind of destroyed us. Well, not kind of destroyed us, but you're you're equal with the so-called white man. You're equal with dealing with this guy to the point where you fall for you fallen for all his bullshit, and you have sold your your nation out. 
Now you out here with fucking blonde hair in your damn head, a blonde wig on, blonde weave on with blue eye with fucking contacts and shit, looking crazy as hell, telling a nigga I don't need you, I don't need you, don't, and, 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 and then a nigga fuck around and get a baby while you, oh my goodness, the nigga's life is over with, and you, and you punish him right along with the so-called white man. So it's a lot of stuff that's going on that you so-called black women, you're about to see in these end days where shit is about to get real, real tough for y'all asses, man. And that's gonna be punishment from you. How about Shimmy I was shy for the shit that you've done, man. Now, the women that believe in this truth, they're gonna have some mercy, man, from you. How about Shimmy I was shy. But these women, I'm talking about, man, it's some beauties out here. Don't get me wrong. Our nation got some real beautiful women, but the Lord is about to do their asses all kinds of nasty, dirty, man. They about to be out, I ain't gonna even go off into it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go into it, fuck it. They about to be out here dirty. All them fucking cat claws that they've been buying, that shit is about to be a wrap. Eyelashes gonna be, your, your motherfucker might be walking around here with a third of one eyelash on their eye. <laughs> the weeds are gonna be done. You're not gonna have fucking tampons. You're not gonna have no fucking, you're gonna be nasty. You're gonna be stank. You're gonna be funky. And niggas gonna be looking at you like, oh, yo, she got a fat ass. <laughs> she had a fat, oh, she, oh, that was, oh, damn, that's such and such. That shit is not gonna matter, man, when, when shit hit the fans out here. When this shit get real rough, niggas not gonna care about how fuck your fucking Instagram channel. And that's for damn sure. They're not gonna care about your, your TikTok channel. They're not going to care about how your only fans. And some of these, these niggas going to remember you. Like, oh, that's damn, that's such and such. You're going to be at your lowest, begging of the, 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 the simplest of a nigga that you used to diss to look out for you. And that nigga going to dog you. As a matter of fact, it's a movie. It's called The Stand by Stephen King. It, it, it's, a, um, it's a scene in there. I can't think of the lady's name or the guy that plays the part right off, but, you know, he was a simp, man. He was a real simp. He had never even had no pussy before. So lucky for my language. But ended up, you know, ended up getting with this one, you know, chick that was supposedly, you know, she was the, the main, main top man. It got down to the boogie, man. He was like, man, he was dogging her ass out like, you ain't. You're going to listen to what I got to say. But then it ended up it ended up bold anyway in the movie. But anyway, I didn't want to keep the lesson long. I just wanted to just kind of touch on a few points, man. Hey, things are about to get real rough out here. Let's get this again because this is a mother that stabbed her daughter. She stabbed me right in my heart and it was like, she said the B word. It was like, you can die. And I was still in shock. Sitting in a hospital bed with a 12-inch scar down the middle of her chest, Ashley Williams in here because she says her mom stabbed her. Only thing I recall is her coming at me, like, with the knife. Like, I didn't even see my mom. I see a demon, like, a real demon, like... She had veins in her head. Her eyeballs was popping out. It happened on Ashley's 34th birthday earlier this month at her mom's home off Myers Road on Detroit's west side. They were celebrating at first. Then at the end of the night, Ashley says her mom just snapped, coming at her with a kitchen knife. I love my mom. And the whole thing is, I really, like, I've been saying, like, I don't want her to go to prison for a long time. But I want her to know that she can't keep getting away with stuff. Hard to believe she can say that just two weeks after being stabbed in the heart. Ashley says her mom battles with alcoholism, but Ashley, the oldest sibling, still looks after her. Even the day this happened, Ashley picked her mom up after she'd wrecked another car. I don't know. See, after she wrecked another car, just out here reckless as hell. And I just seen a, 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 a Eve. I went to the store earlier. You know, I kind of had to swerve around. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we got the black car. See, we call them the black car. Which is basically the DTs as far as the police. And they kind of be low key. And you really don't know who they are until they flick them lights. It's a wrap. <laughs> You're not going to even really notice them like that. And they flick the lights on this little E. And I'm looking, you know, I pulls up, you know, um, so I swerves around them, go, you know, go, you know, kind of detour a little bit to get to where I'm trying to get to. 
you know, you know, they got her all out the car. She's out here in some of those rainbow tights with the ass out. You know, with the you know, just looking crazy as hell. You know, little young, long, little young Eve. She couldn't have been no more than about 20, 21, 22 possibly or whatever. So you know, I'm just like you know, they looking at you know, um, the the police here. They all police. They kind of look at you like they be looking around because they 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 really don't <laughs> trust their surroundings, man, in these fucked up ass cities because they don't know what Jake gonna do. But Jake is not out here um, fighting and defending. On the so-called black women like that, man. You know, they just like up. Oh, some niggas just hopping out and snickering. So I goes in the store, comes back out. You know, at first they just kind of had her out of the ride, talking to her. But once they pull you out of your ride, you, you know pretty much about what's coming next. Because normally if they're going to just give you a traffic violation, you're going to get that traffic violation while you're still sitting in your vehicle. So I went in the store, came back out, and, and now they got her in cuffs. I'm like, oh, shit, you know what I'm saying? But I kind of figured it, you know, because like I said, with a young lady, especially, you know, young man, they're going to lock, they're going to handcuff your ass until they check everything, you know? So, ended it up, they had her in cuffs. I'm like, yeah, they're about to do the thing to her, you know? Um, and I ended up driving around. I went around another block and I came back up just trying to avoid them because they kind of had the street blocked off. And then I see another, you know, plane car. Once I seen that plane car, I started looking. I'm like, yep, they done called a plane car on her. She's going to jail. And I'll be down. I'm looking a block down. I'm a block up. I'm looking a block down to see. And, 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 and the red, white, and blue, you know, they pulled up to transport her ass. That's when I knew, like, yep, she's out of here. She's gone. But my thing is, is you got, you, you know you dirty. You out here doing all kinds of bullshit. Your license not together. You got a damn warrant. You got whatever, whatever. But you speeding. Why bring the heat on you? Why not just do the speed limit? You speeding. You got the music loud. You blowing a blunt. And our, I'm telling you, man, our women are just all out of control, man. And the Lord is about to really start judging. Um, our, uh, he's already doing it. It's not that he's about to start my salakia. He's already judging our people, man. So. You know, keep hey, keep your head on the swivel out here, cause this this is sad. And, and if you notice, she looked like two different people. That picture that they showed. Now she's in this hospital. This is what I'm talking about. This is gonna be the difference in what women are gonna be looking like. All that Instagram, all that TikTok shit. You're able to put on the eyelashes. You're able to put on a wig, blonde hair, whatever the fuck you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But it's gonna come a point where you, cause she now this right here, she's in a hospital bed looking like this is a goddamn mugshot. You see, this is a totally different person. Let's get it. Let's get it. When let me, I'm gonna... Hold on. Let me let me scroll back to show you. This is her in the hospital bed. But this is the picture that they're showing of her for her 34th birthday, so to speak. This is her. 34th birthday earlier this. See that? See that? Cutie. You wouldn't even think that this is the same person that's in the hospital bed. Now, let's get it. That her mom's home off Myers Road on Detroit's west side. They were celebrating at first. Then at the end of the night, Ashley says her mom just snapped, coming at her with a kitchen knife. I love my mom, and the whole thing is, I really like. I've been saying, like, I don't want her to go to prison for a long time, but I want her to know that she can't keep getting away with stuff. Hard to believe she can say that just two weeks after being stabbed in the heart. Ashley says her mom battles with alcoholism, but Ashley, the oldest sibling, still looks after her. Even the day this happened, Ashley picked her mom up after she'd wrecked another car. I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work. Like, they... It's not, they don't know when I'm going to be in the clear. They said I probably will never breathe the same again. Two open heart surgeries and more complications means hospital bills are piling up. And Ashley, of course, cannot return to work as a housekeeper at a local home. Love my mom and the whole... It's a lot of you. Them damn hospital bills is no fucking joke. She'll be paying for them for the rest of her life, man, unless she hit a big game lotto. Trust me. Them fucking hospital bills are no fucking joke. You spend a week in the hospital, that shit is like a 30-year mortgage, man. Two two weeks, a month, you spend a month. It was a so-called um black woman that supposedly she was she was um, you know, this about a year back now with the COV-19. She ended up getting that shit and she was in a hospital and she was a nurse at the same hospital that she worked at. 
she ended up was in a hospital for a month and her fucking bill was over a million dollars so think about how much you're being charged per day a month only is like at best 31 days so here she goes she didn't had two open heart surgeries man that bill man her fucking bill probably right now probably about 50 million at best man and then she still got to come back and forth, be on that match. She's finished, man. She's finished. But that's enough of that, man. I'm, I'm going to end on out. You know, um, but like I said, again, hey, you women that are at ease out here, man, hey, it's hot time to awake out of sleep. We're in the last days. It, the niggas is about to start ravishing chicks. This is the days and times that you're living in. You're, you're living in the days and times where you're really going. And that little pink pistol. That little cute pink pistol that you got, <laughs> that shit ain't going to work. You might be able to bust off a round or two, two rounds, three rounds. But once you run through that little clip and a half, you, you, you know, at best, a woman got two clips. You might have, okay, okay, say you gangster, you got an arsenal. But it, how long is that going to last? You're not going to be able to come out here on these streets when shit hit the fans like that, man. You, when you come out here on these streets, the only women that's going to be able to come out on these streets really, really like that real tough is going to be the ones that look like fucking men and they asses are going to be found out too. Straight up, man. So, you know, hey, it's high time to awake out of sleep. Repent to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of his name, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. That's the true name of the Father and Son, Yahweh, which means that he exists where he is to be. True name of his son is Yahweh Shai which means that he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. Our Lord is not some white guy, and his name is for damn sure not Jesus. See, here go the police again. They about to stop this motherfucker right here. Hey, look, I should, let me turn my, I should have turned my shit on. They definitely on their ass. I already know they about to get their asses. Waiting on them. Can't wait. It's locking. On their asses. I ain't even turn it on. There you go. There go the lights. Right in their driveway. Wait until they turn into their driveway. And this is the second time that's done happened to the same house, too. The black car, man. That's why we call it the black car. Yeah, they rushing up. Like it ain't. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but hey, but see, the, the so-called white man is out here lurking right now. It's summertime. Jake, and, and it's going to be so crazy. Because it's going to, these, these, so, these motherfuckers is going to be pulling people over when shit hit the fans. And they just going to be doing whatever they want to do because there's not going to be no accountability. They're going to use the squad cars to protect and, and, and save their families. They're going to take your food. <laughs> you coming from a supermarket, you're going to see lights flicking behind you with the damn police officers. These clowns is going to be taking your fucking food, man. And whatever else you got. They're not going to take you to jail. They're just going to take all your shit. Because they don't want to be found out. Oh, this motherfucker just came from Walmart. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I'm, I'm literally looking at the same thing that I looked at today. Caught them. They waited till they turned into the driveway of their house, man. So now they got probable cause really to just, okay... Oh, we found something in your house, in your car. They could throw a crack stem in. Well, what is this? And then, you know, Jake don't know their rights. They, Jake don't really know what's up. And even if you know your rights, these motherfuckers still a, a beat your ass over the head with the gun and, and run up off of your... The police is going to... Matter of fact, that's, that's, hey, that's real talk. That's the spirit right there because I'm looking at them. I wish I should have just turned on the camera. But they right right here. They're, they're going to be, them going to be some of your main ones that's going to be running you. And especially you women. They're going to be running you. And throw your ass in some handcuffs. Throw your ass in the back seat of the squad car and take you to their cousin house. I'm telling you, man, y'all better wake the fuck up, man. We are living in the last days where motherfuckers is about to be crazy as all hell. And so like it for the language, but I'm just being straight bold, man. These motherfuckers is about to go nuts out here. And it's going to be your local police. Motherfuckers going to pull up in a fucking ambulance to, as if they're trying to help your child. And they're going to roll your child to the basement of their home. 
do all kinds of dirty stuff to them. And, and, and just before they fucking roast their asses with some vegetables for support their next meal, man. I'm telling you, man, y'all better wake up. You, you, you women, you, it's really too late for a lot of you. Because <laughs> the Lord is just going to give it to you because you deserve it. Because that's just your punishment for being so goddamn wicked on this planet. For being so damn proud. All the bullshit that you done done to the Israelite, man. The Lord is about to give you what you've been putting out. You're about to reap what you've been sowing. <laughs> Straight up, man. It's just that simple, man. I hate to sound that bold, but we have to warn the flock. We got to blow this trumpet, man. We got to do it. We have to do it this way, even though it may sound crazy to you. And hey, you can believe it if you want to. But I'm telling you, in the coming days, and we've been telling people, it, <laughs> And it pisses, it, it really pisses the prophets off. It pisses the men of the Lord off, man, because nobody takes us serious. They just look at us like, oh, man, well, yeah. Nobody, you know, they talk all kinds of shit. They just don't take it. But watch. You just wait. It's coming. It's coming. That's why they call it a prophecy, because we're, we're foretelling the future. And it's coming soon. So, hey, repent, man, with that. Pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashala.